We recently put out a free pack of gas tanks, which consisted of a gas tank model and five different UV map texture sets that could be applied to it. And to announce the pack, we released a neat little promo video that shut off the pack with all the effect maps applied and moving lights and music. And it was a great way to show off the pack and gave people a much better feel for what you could do with it than you would have gotten just from a few still shots. So what you're watching now is the first of a two-part tutorial where we're going to show how we put together that promo video. To create the video, we use an application called iClone. This is a very unique application and it has definitely become our application of choice for creating this kind of 3D promo video. At iClone's heart is a real-time rendering engine that's just like what you might find in a computer game. And that means you can use it to test out things like normal maps, just as well as you could in a game engine, but then you have all these video editing tools and you can turn the result into an animation that you could upload to YouTube, for example. So if you're a texture artist or a modeler and you want to take your portfolio up a notch, iClone is definitely an application that I'd recommend. Relusion, the company that makes iClone, has offered us a great bundle for it that you can find on our website. This bundle includes not only iClone, but also a program called 3D Exchange. Now, you might wonder, well, what's 3D Exchange and why do I care? Well, 3D Exchange is vital. With iClone, you can build scenes, you can do animation, facial puppeteering, really sophisticated stuff, but all the models at your disposal are ones that either came included in iClone or from Reillusion's store. That's all well and good, but for our purposes, where we want to use our own models, you need to be able to bring your own stuff into iClone, and that's what 3D Exchange will let you do. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use 3D Exchange to take your 3D assets and get them ready for iClone, and then in the second part of the series, we'll look at how the video itself was created. First, we'll need to download the Gas Tanks pack, so visit this URL and then click this link to download the pack. Finally, find the pack in Windows Explorer and extract it. And then load up 3D Exchange. In 3D Exchange, begin by opening the model that you'll find in the pack that we just extracted. Double click the gas tank object file. And you see our gas tank model was loaded. It's just looking a little faceted. And you can fix that by clicking the triangle here and then going to the normal section. And the function you want is this auto smooth button here, but it's grayed out. And that's because the entire document is selected. You want to just select the individual mesh. And now you can click auto smooth and it smooth the model right out for us. So now we want to fix up the materials associated with that model. So again, you can click that triangle, then go to Material. This is another section where if the entire document is selected, it's grayed out, but, and you want just the mesh to be selected. First, we want to apply a color map to the model. You can do that by double-clicking to Fuse. And if you open up the gas tanks pack again, you'll see that there are five folders and each of these contains a different set of textures. You can use any of these. I'll pick the grungy red gas tank here and then double click the grungy red color map. And here it's been applied to the model. So the next thing is to make the surface bumpy and we can do that with the bump channel here. I'll double click it. And you'll see that there are two height maps here, a regular one and a normal map version. Now, if we loaded the regular version, it's not going to make a lot of difference to the model. I'll go down here and I'll increase specular just to make it a little more visible. But if you look at the highlights there, as I put that on and off, it's not making a very big difference. And the reason is regular height maps in iClone are really suited for very gritty noise textures. But this, is a, this height map is a little bit different. It has very large scale features, as we'll see in a moment, in addition to fine textural details. And for that type of height map, you really will need a normal map. So we can double click this. And I'll show you another little pitfall here. If I just double click the normal map, 
it loads in and you can see it's all nice and gritty but it doesn't really look that good and there are no large scale features again and the reason if i double click this again is because after you select the normal map you have to make sure that import as normal map is selected otherwise it will not import it correctly and after you do that now it's really starting to look good so the final channel we want to look at is the specular map here and you can see how the corroded parts of the surface are just as shiny as the untouched parts of the surface and that's not very realistic we can fix that with a specular map loading the specular channel and now you can see some parts are a lot less shiny than other parts now if you've been following along and you're not seeing any of these bumps you probably have this button here unset it's the pixel shader button and you can think of that as like a high quality versus low quality preview and you'll definitely need that button to be set in order to see all the bumps and the high quality effects the final thing you'll want to do and you'll need to do this individually for each set of textures you import is set the specular and glossiness sliders here you can think of glossiness as kind of like how wet the surface is if I if I increase that more it really makes the surface look more moist and then specular is the brightness of those highlights I'll just set those the way I like them I think that looks pretty good right there so all that remains before we export our model is to scale it properly now you don't technically have to do this because after you bring an object into iClone you can make it any size you want but if you scale all your objects beforehand it's very convenient because then when you assemble a scene all you have to do is bring in a bunch of objects and the sizes of all the objects will automatically fit well together and you won't have like huge chairs and tiny tables and nine feet tall women unless you're into that kind of thing and the 3D Exchange has a very convenient feature for doing this. It's the dummy button here. And when I first saw this, I thought you'd like click that button and the interfaces get very simple all of a sudden. But what it really does is when you click that, it inserts a representation of a person in the middle of your scene. And you're wondering, where's the person? Well, it's a little bit of a pitfall to be aware of. If your model is really huge, the person may actually be inside the model, so it might not be visible at the beginning. So if you click this triangle and then go to transform, and everything is grayed out here, this is actually one of the places where you need the root document node to be selected here. Then you can start scaling the model down here, and you can see the, the representation of a person, so you can scale each of your models to look good relative to a person then you'll know all the models will look good in your final scene so this is personal taste i envision these tanks as being relatively small so i'll set that to 35 and i can see here that's about how i'd expect it to be next to a person so finally we can export the model by clicking file export here then type in our name And 3D Exchange has created an iProp file that is ready for use in iClone. And then just keep repeating the process for each of the tanks. I'll go back to the Materials section. Select the Mesh object again. And now I'll load in all the texture channels for one of the other tanks. I'll do the Oxygen tank this time. Again, remember for the normal map, you have to select import as normal map. And then for each of the texture sets, you'll want to set the specular settings. I think that highlight is a little bright there, so I might turn that down. Maybe I'll make this tank a little glossier too.
and then export it. So that concludes the 3D exchange part of the series. Move on to the next part and we'll examine how the video is actually put together in iClone.